I'm excited to be in front of you and uh, excited to talk about last week's performance. Questions? was it just from a confidence standpoint for the team to hold them to a field goal at the end of the game after the week before they had given up the touchdown, this time they hold them to a field goal, and then not only get the job done defensively, but also win the game? I think the, the most encouraging um, aspect of, of Saturday's games was, was our second half, especially probably the first four or five series of the second half. Uh, we had a Mark Murphy had a great pick. We had three, I think, three straight three and outs, including one after a fake punt. So, so the confidence those guys gained. We had played pr six pretty good quarters prior uh, prior to that point in the first two games, and uh, played pretty good in the first half. So for us to be able to come out uh, against a very very quality opponent and be able to to start that fast in the third quarter, I think that gave us momentum for the the rest of the second half. I think the biggest thing we, we were able to communicate on the sideline throughout the second half of, of trying to talk about what we were going to do and, and really just lay the groundwork of what was going to happen. And uh, we had got on our heels a little bit on that, that last drive and again, Coach Wilson could see it and we could see it from the sidelines. So just to be able to, to gather the guys together, there was times out there that we had a couple of guys that were third teamers at the time. Uh, you know, playing a lot of guys, we're always going to play a lot of snaps. We we anticipate that, we understand that, and I think this is the first time I've ever been associated with a, a travel team that played all but one player that we took. So, uh, just to be able to get them on the side and be able to talk to them and kind of regather them uh, was a, a great utilization of our time out there by coach. The defensive line to be so much more disruptive. They use their hands better to get off the snap better. What about? I, I think confidence. I was very encouraged by Darius Latham. Uh, Darius Latham, first snap of the game, has a two-yard loss. And uh, we were very uh, aware of very, two very good running backs. And for us to be able to do a great job up front controlling the line of scrimmage, uh, I, cer I think certainly helped us be more aggressive in all areas of the game. What, what, what do you think Darius is? You mentioned Darius. What do you think he's at right now? Well, I, I think just understanding and trusting the defense. And that's what – and Darius knows it. Uh, Nobody in this program's had as big of a, uh, I guess, a, I won't say turnaround, but a, as much improvement from spring to fall. And he just keeps getting better. And so we, you know, with him and Bobby and, and the guys up front to be able to just continue to compete and have guys pushing each other, I think is the best thing for our, our defensive line. When you look at Maryland, um, you know, they got a dual threat quarterback, they got some pretty strong receivers. It's just overall, what's, what's the concern with them? With Maryland, uh, having faced them in the past in the Atlantic Coast Conference, Maryland's very talented. C.J. Browns, I think he's been there about eight years. I don't know, but he's been hurt a couple times. I think this is the sixth year we faced him three times. Very talented. Six foot three, very fast. Saw him one night run for about 250 yards against a good Clemson defense. So he, he can he's a, a dangerous quarterback as far as a guy with, with flat out straight line speed, can really run away from people and has a lot of targets. Stephon Diggs is one of the uh, one of the highest recruited uh, wide receivers in the country. Very talented uh, receiver, number one, and uh, Deion Long is another one. They really got uh, as good a receiving core as probably will face this year. Coach, I know your team played 113 snaps against Bowling Green, but how can your defense look so drastically different from one week to the next? Well, I, I think you look at the first half of Bowling Green, we, we probably played pretty similar to the first half of Missouri. And so I just think our kids having confidence, they were a little more aggressive. We talked about attacking, and not just pressure-wise attacking, just attacking in all phases. We were much better in the open field. We were much better getting off blocks. And, and I just think that the mentality that coach and our assistant coaches preached throughout the week, and our guys bought in. I mean, they bought in. and, and I would say from a, from a, we probably didn't grade out any better than we did against Bowling Green, but just the relentless pursuit. We, when we missed a tackle, there was three and four and five guys, white shirts chasing that ball. So just the ability for our guys to, to have confidence in, in each other and really pursue and chase the football. And that's just kind of a mindset we've tried to ingrain in them. Is there something more, I mean, now that they've experienced that, maybe a light bulb goes on that says, hey, I have you know, I see how we can play. I 
Well, we, we have uh, Sundays we practice, and so yesterday we tried to reinforce what they're doing well and uh, show the specific reps of this should have been a big play, but because of the guys from, from all over the field, you know, taking great angles, pursuing the ball, you know, we were able to, to limit big plays and it sometimes make tackle for losses. So just trying to reinforce that every day. And uh, we practice hard. We go hard here and uh, just continuing Tuesday will be a physical day just to be able to continue that. We're going to tackle tomorrow. Typically, a lot of teams don't tackle during the week. But that's a, a skill skill area we need to continue to improve on. Second half, I don't think you gave, you guys gave up a play over 30 yards. In the first half, they, they had a couple of explosions, but one time you guys brought the house from the yeah. left side, and they happened to call yeah. the sweep to the other side. Right. That's for 68. It's a, it's a risk reward kind of thing, but did you guys feel comfortable attacking that way? And then in the second half, you know, you can always learn, guys learn how to rotate safeties and how to cover, you know, even when you're blitzing from one side, you can still cover the other side. Did you guys get, Learn a little bit about that Saturday. Well, I think the biggest thing we saw with our guys was just an ability. We saw formation, saw different. Missouri gave us some, some challenges as far as that our kids have not seen and even practiced. Our, our offense gives us everything we can imagine, but situations and, and guys like Mark Murphy out there were able to make checks. Uh, Antonio Allen, uh, guys knew their role. Kyle Kennedy hasn't played a lot for us, made a big hit on the goal line on a pressure. So just guys being able to step up, understand what we're trying to ask them in practice and getting more familiar with it and really making some good decisions out there. I think that that's what we were most excited about. A lot of uh, chatter yesterday that, uh, that uh, Indiana wasn't, wasn't using 3-4, that there was a four-man front and this and that. But really, uh, you and Coach today, have made it seem like it was had little to do with scheme and, and more as you suggested with you know attitude and aggressiveness and relentlessness. No question. I mean, and again, we had great guys grading 75, 80 percent, not not the level we need to grade out at, but just from an effort and, and pursuit, you know, the guys really bought in, and I think uh, you know really felt confident in what they were doing, and, and like we talked about, just being able to attack and. Uh, I think that was the biggest mindset for, for our success. It wasn't a scheme or it wasn't a particular defensive call. I think it was just our players uh, you know, had it in their minds that they were going to go out and, and attack the football and chase the football down and, and did, a, did a nice job, obviously. Coach T. Gray is the co of the week of the Big Ten. Just talk about the way he's playing for it. Well, he, he's a guy that uh, we give out a money, money man award, okay, money downs. We've been – Pretty good on third down this year. It's one of the, one of the areas we really have tried to to stress and focus. And uh, our money player of the game was T. Gray, and so he's wearing around that gold chain, and uh, we pass it around from player to player. But uh, for a guy to to be able to respond, he had a, a, a tough penalty there on the second to last play of the game, where he, you know we talked about wanting to be physical on the quarterback, you know. And take our shots, but obviously make them clean shots. And and he really hit uh, Matt Mock and and was penalized, and came right back the next play. And for a freshman to make that kind of play in the open field on that kind of stage is is pretty impressive. How would you say he is for a freshman? Or, you know, what are some of the things that have made him been able to have an impact? So I think instinctively it comes from a great program down in uh, in Cincinnati. Colerain High School is an outstanding program. Very similar to us defensively, so he's he's got a little bit of an understanding of of what we're trying to do. Coach Inge does a great job with him as far as uh, his inside linebacker coach, and just his athleticism, I think, gives him the best. You know, the first couple games, he made some mistakes out there, but he's starting to minimize those mistakes, and and I think feel more comfortable. And we we expect only bigger things from him. Measure something like this, but but his wrestling background. Uh, help him in these kind of situations. I mean, obviously, you're you're trying to shed blockers, like you're trying to overcome your opponent. Well, his, his ta obviously his takedown on that last play of the game. There was he wasn't the you know uh, the receiver number six was not going to get out of that. And I think his ability to rush the passer. Sometimes some of our guys maybe can't finish it like Tigray. When Tigray gets his hands on you, you're in trouble. I didn't ask the question. I'm sorry. I tend not to do. But if, are you comfortable with, you talk about aggression and, and attitude and mindset. Are you comfortable with risk, risk reward? You 
You're going to give up a play every now and then, but you still got to come in. We are, and I think Coach, Coach, uh, Coach challenged all of us players, coaches, everybody to, to, uh, you know, be a, be more aggressive from a standpoint of, of, as a player, you know, being aggressive with your tackling. Don't be afraid to miss a tackle, uh, whether it's uh, your technique. And so, certainly, I understand that. You know, some of the calls we have may not be the most sound, or not, I shouldn't say sound, but may not be the best. You know, there is some some risk involved, and and a couple of times that uh, you know Missouri made us pay a couple times, but but I think we certainly, with our 11 tackles for losses, you know, our, our relentless pressure on the quarterback, making him, you know, we wanted to move him off his spot, make him move, run around, and. Uh, I think the the reward certainly uh, outweighed a couple of the obvious risks we had in there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you.